Viva la vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from vivalavegan.net and welcome to this week's podcast. I have today Heather Lonsbury who is an acupuncturist in LA. She runs a website called livenaturallivewell.com and she has just released her new book called Fix Your Mood with Food. So she's our guest today. Welcome Heather. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And um, you're in LA at the moment? The I am. Beautiful, sunny, warm <laughs> LA. <laughs> Rub it in. Middle of winter here in Brisbane. <laughs> Poor so, baby. <laughs> so tell me about your website, livenaturallivewell.com. Well, I started my website. It was under a different name before, but I started it about 10, uh, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And my intention was to make... Um, Chinese medicine and nutrition accessible and for people to see how easy it really is. Like I have videos of me treating people because most people have the impression, oh my god, there's needles, that's scary, it must hurt. But once once they've experienced it or seen a video of how, you know, simple and non-painful and unpainful it is, the people um, give it a try. Um, and I also have inter- an interview with you on there when we first met a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really great to have. And my, I have several articles on, on my site um, giving easy tips to live a healthier, happier life. Mm-hmm. And yeah. What are, the, yeah. what are the main sort of things you talk about on there or what do you find most people go there for or ask questions about? Well, I mostly focus on nutrition on the site just because that's something that people can do on their own without having to come see me. Mm-hmm. So I talk about great sources for calcium without having to eat dairy, which isn't actually even a good source of calcium anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I give tips on how to get your iron and healthy fats and also um, tips for lightening your mood, have a healthier and happier joyous life. Um, I talk about autism, infertility, vitamin D, since that's a buzzword the last couple of years. Everyone's talking about vitamin D. So there's, it's a great resource for all kinds of information. Yeah, and if, if anyone wants to check it out, make sure you see livenaturallivewell.com. And um, you just launched a new book in New York and in L.A. You just had a couple of book launches for your book, Fix Your Mood with Food. Can you tell me, why did you decide to write it in the first place? Um, well, I decided several years ago that I wanted to write a book, but you've, you've written books, so you know, like having the idea and actually following through with it are two different things. And long um, processes. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really get focused on it until a few years ago, but mm-hmm. my intention was that I wanted to get out the information that I've been ch- sharing with my patients to a, a broader audience because obviously I can only help so many people in a day, um, and I just wanted to um, show people how easy it is to eat healthy, it's delicious, you can eat to help reduce anxiety, depression, if you're a worry warts. And um, most people don't know that. They don't make the connection. They might say, oh, well, you know, I felt kind of crappy the next day, but they kind of relate it to just a food hangover. But how about we say, oh, my God, I feel so much better because of what I ate this morning or had for dinner last night. Like, why don't we switch the conversation around to how much, how much we're thriving by what we, what we eat? Mm. Yes, mm. thank you. So... And the book is set up in four sections. I start off with giving an introduction to Chinese medicine um, so people can see who haven't tried it before um, that it's not this weird, scary thing that only people like myself in California do. Um, (laughs) And then I go into great detail. uh, The second section, there's a chapter on... um, different moods, like the first one in that chapter is anger. So if you have issues with anger or PMS, your short fuse, there's tips for what to eat, but I also share some of my patient stories throughout the book. So yeah, you like can that. thank you. Yeah. So you can relate easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
to like, oh, okay, well, this person had similar issues. That means I can get better too because I think a big part of why people stay sick either physically or emotionally is they don't think that there's any real hope uh, in getting better. It's just we have to live this way. Um, and then the third section I go into more detail about how Western nutrition can help your mood. So I talk about sources for your B vitamins, um, the important, importance of probiotics, um, iron and how that lifts your mood and then the last section goes into great detail of different foods on why they help you from a Chinese perspective and a Western, Western perspective. Mm -hmm. So one example I like to share is black beans. Chinese med uh, medicine is known for thousands of years, literally, that black beans help with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And we now know Western nutrition that in black beans actually do support brain function and help with sedation if you're anxious, like it's high in tryptophan. So and tryptophan has a great calming effect to it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, and then the last part, there's, yeah, thank you. And then there's um, charts at the end of the book. So once you've read it, you can say, okay, I'm really stressed out about a job interview or my heart's been broken. You can go right to the end and figure out what foods you should be focusing on. Yeah, that's good. And tell yeah. me the process. Yeah. Like, when did you decide to write this and, you know, how long did it take you to write? Because it's actually quite in-depth. There's a lot of text in there. How many pages is it again? It's 240. Hold on. So oh, wait. That's with, with um, it's 200, like, 200 pages with the index and everything. Mm -hmm. Show us the um, It's over 63,000 words. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, like I said before, I thought about writing the book several years ago, and then about three, I committed to writing it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I had written sort of a basic, um, basic book. It was about half of how big it is, or less than half of what it is today, the final product. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, I reached out to getting a literary agent, um, and then she helped me get a publisher. And with getting a publisher, I had to spend three months pretty much nonstop finishing the first draft of the book, and then edits took another couple months. Um, so within a year of getting a publisher, the book was out. So did they? Did your publisher request anything new that you had done, or did they re request any new p um, path to go down? Um, well, they wanted me to um, sometimes talk more about a specific topic, um, and they did have me take a few things out because being a first-time author, you know, I, I, I'm still, I'm still learning the process of what what needs to stay in and what needs to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a few things that they didn't think fit in the book, but then they eventually agreed with me, mm -hmm. like the easy to follow charts at the end. Yeah. Uh, they eventually realized like, what, what a great resource that would be for my readers. Um, but for the most part, they just, they liked what I had to say. That's so always that always helps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. And tell me about your launches that you've just had. Okay, well, I've done three parties so far. Um, I started in Los Angeles because that's where I live, and I have for 20 years. Um, I had Sporks, the Spork Food Sisters. So for all your followers who know Spork Sisters, mm -hmm. um, they hosted it, um, which was very generous. And I had a vegan Thai place that's pretty new to L.A. called Araya. They did some of the catering. Um and there was about 60 people that came. It was, uh, I made it a fundraiser for Farm Sanctuaries, since I'm obviously a huge fan of animal sanctuaries. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I had a blast. I think everyone else did. And you can see pictures from all three of my events on my fan page on Facebook. Which is? Um, Which? Um, it's facebook.com forward slash Doc Heather, D-O-C-H-E-A-T-R, and the number one. So you can look at them there. Um, and then I did, this was super exciting for me, I did an event with Dr. Neil Bernard of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in Washington, D.C. He wrote the quote for the cover of the book, mm -hmm. which I'm honored to have, but he also introduced me at the Washington, D.C. event, and we had an 
at a Whole Foods there, mm-hmm. and Whole Foods did an amazing job with um, providing some healthy vegan snacks, and about 40 people came to that, mm-hmm. and I sold out of books, which was really exciting. I de- definitely definitely could have sold more if they had ordered more, so that felt really good. Um, and then New York, I was honored to have Candle Cafe West host and cater my party in New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, very gracious, gracious host, and they we made it um, a fundraiser for the Coalition for Healthy School Lunches. Oh, good. Um, oh, good. So uh, a portion of the proceeds went to that, and that was a lot of fun too. And they did a special and menu for you, didn't they? They did. Well, they just did some appetizers and like this watermelon lemonade deliciousness that was really great. Um, where there was just. There's, we simplified the menu a little bit. Um, there was edamame and guacamole and then these seitan chimichurro little tapa things that were really good. So, But Bart and Joy were such gracious hosts. And I'm nice. so happy yes. for life. Lovely. Yes, it was fun. That's and I had, really cool. I had, um, I'd, I've never watched a show, but one of the Real Housewives of New York a, a, a big uh, reality TV show star in, in, in America was there, so that was kind of fun to have the reality show aspect to my party. Yes. <laughs> Always fun. <laughs> <laughs> and are you yeah. working on any other launches or book signings or anything like that at the moment that people might be able to go to? Yeah, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm working with my publicist right now on doing some more events. Um, I'm going to be doing some book signings at Whole Foods around the LA area and in New York. Um, I'll be back in New York in September. Mm-hmm. I'll be doing um, another a workshop in Washington, D.C., September 21st mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. at a vegan yoga studio called Buddha Bee. What's the and workshop on? Uh, it's it's based on my book, so nutrition oh. for mental health, and it's only ten bucks, so oh, right. totally affordable. And I'll also be at Natural Products Expo East. Um, I'm in talks with a few different vendors on where where I'm going to be doing a books um, book giveaway, so I can't give that away just yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to be in Austin for sure next April. Um, but we're still finalizing where else I'm going to be. But everything is, if you sign up for my newsletter, um, it's its on there. And also my Facebook fan page, I'll be posting any future events. Mm, sounds really good. Good luck with the book. Have you got it with you? Can you show everyone what it looks like? Yes. Yay. Is that a good app? Fix your mood with food. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty cover. Yeah, it looks great. I love the green. And yeah. so where can people buy the book? Like you, they can get it on your website, livenaturallivewell.com, anywhere yeah. else? It's, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, and you can always request if you're at a – if you like to buy from a mom-and-pop bookstore, which I definitely prefer, um, you can request that they order it for you. So if the store – close to you doesn't have it so you can you can ask them to order it for you um and it's only 16.95 so it's also available as an ebook so if you're doing kindle or anything similar to kindle you can read it that way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very good options (laughs) and um we you actually interviewed me for your podcast quite a few years ago i can't even remember when it was now and um, what's your podcast? Um, it's on blogtalkradio.com, mm-hmm. and I'm a featured host on there because I've had, uh, at this point, um, almost 130,000 listeners mm-hmm. over the right. last four years, so right. that's pretty pretty impressive. Um, my biggest show to date was 20,000 listens, so that's uh, I'm very, very proud of it, and I've had... Um, people in the health world come on my show. Um, people in the um, nonprofits come on my show, and also environmental causes. So it's it's a wide variety. Like I just today had on the owner of Beyond Meat, Ethan Brown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had Chris Carr, Kathy Freston, Brendan Brazier, um, all just uh, all kinds of different great plant based activists on my show with. With a health twist. Mm-hmm. And why did you start it? 
Um, it's sort of the same thing as the book. I wanted to get this, get the information that I had and also talk to people who had a different take on things. Like obviously someone like Brendan Brazier, his expertise in, in nutrition for athletes. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm nowhere near as good, good as, he, as he is in that regard. So, and also just to share people's experience, like someone like Chris Carr, mm -hmm. a cancer, living with cancer and thriving. Like I want, I wanted to share hope mm -hmm. um, with people and also give them inspiration to like maybe move forward on their dreams. Like I was talking to Ethan Brown today about, um, you know, if you want to start something, it's never too late. Like if you have a goal or idea in mind, like writing a book or starting a company or changing your diet or starting to exercise, you can be 20, you can be 80 and don't listen to the people that tell you you can't do it. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. a very, very good tip for life in general, isn't it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, and I hear a lot with my patients and sometimes my friends too, like, oh, you know, well, my family won't support me or I have to go back to school or any of these, you know, excuses, um, which are fine. But I, I think to me, like, I, I'm so grateful that I went to school for Chinese medicine because I definitely... You know, my parents would have preferred if I going into medicine that I became a Western medical doctor instead of Eastern. Mm -hmm. But obviously now they're very proud of me and excited <laughs> that I'm doing what I do. But the vegan thing is still very weird to them, but mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> How long have you been vegan for? Um, just five years, but I went vegetarian in 1985. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I played with veganism throughout the years, And but I was so addicted to dairy and then I finally committed like this is enough I mean I felt like such a hypocrite still I knew I was still harming animals I mean I would go sometimes months without dairy mm -hmm. um but I, I never felt comfortable and then I finally it's like you know I can overcome my addiction to goat cheese <laughs> a lot of people are addicted to cheese aren't they yes is that related uh, to anything in Chinese medicine Cheese addiction uh, or addiction in general? In, in general, it's usually, um, well, I don't know if you could really say Chinese, Chinese nutrition looks at addiction in different ways depending on what you're addicted to. Like if you're addicted to sweets or dairy, um, that affects certain organs. But if you're a smoker or or addicted to something that you inhale that has other other issues attached to it. So dairy... Dairy, the addiction to dairy would be um, someone who's a worry or overthinking is probably going to be more prone to, to dairy products than someone who isn't. But, um, you know, there's Western, I'm sure you've talked about it on your podcast, the Western reasons for why dairy is so hard to give up. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and it's funny because I treat, I treat addicts, um, you know, anywhere from people addicted to coffee to people who are addicted to crack mm -hmm. um, and everything in between. So I, I know the reasons behind it, but I would be like, oh, just one little bite that looks so good. And then, <laughs> and then I'd fall right back into yeah. my, my addiction. So, but five years, five years ago, I was like, I had, I've had enough and don't miss it at all. And I'm so grateful that I finally made the commitment and will never look back. And you just feel so much better, don't you? Like, I know I'm addicted to sugar. That's one of my things. And I, I can go, you know, a few months or something without sugar. But as soon as I have just a little bit, then I'll be like, oh, I have to have some more sugar the next day. Or it's a very hard one to break, that one. Yeah. Yes. And it's sugar is known to be as addictive as heroin. There's st studies now proving, proving that. And, of course, I'm against animal testing, but they've even had – um, sugar and cocaine and, and mice yeah. and the mice yeah. will go after sugar before they go after cocaine so that's wow. that's how addictive it is <laughs> yeah I'm not surprised <laughs> yeah. so I'm um, going back to your podcast that you do um, what sort of topics do you speak about with people just whatever their interests are or whatever wherever they come from yeah whatever they wherever they come from again someone like Chris Carr and her her over her living with cancer and being a spokesperson for living a healthy life without doing chemo and radiation or surgery and and spreading that message um, or someone like um, 
I had Heather Mills on and we mostly talked about her journey into going vegan. Mm -hmm. um, that's Paul McCartney's ex, for those of you who don't know the name right away. Um, her reasons for going vegan and what inspired her to start her, her food line and restaurants. So um, everyone is different, but I've also had some environmental groups on. Um, and goodness, I'm trying to blank off the top of my head. <laughs> on top of my head, that's so awful because it's been a while since I've had anyone from the environmental movement on my show. But um, talking about the oil's effect on the Amazon and what we can do locally to have an impact on the environment. Obviously, going vegan is the most important one for for uh, helping the environment. Um, so, but I've also had organizations talking about helping. Um, people, uh, children in orphanages in Asia and just the whole gamut. But it's my main message is improving your life and spreading that, spreading that out to the world. So even if you feel like, oh, it's just little, little me, you know, I live in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere, I can't have an impact, but every, everyone can. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> And what's your favorite topic to talk about on the podcast? Um... Well, I definitely love talking about food, mm. <laughs> like most vegans, <laughs> so, um, and how transformation stories, um, mm. so someone, you know, just like my own story of, because I'll share this a little bit on my show sometimes, depending on the guest, but how I went from sort of, oh, I'll try being vegetarian for the summer, mm -hmm. to it becoming sort of my life's work, and and how, how that happens, so... The transformation story and I was a you know a junk food junkie mm -hmm. um, and eating McDonald's on a regular basis and the thought of eating anything like that which just is totally gross to me now mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. stories of transfer transformation and how mm -hmm. you know you know people came from certain attitudes or ways of living and how how they're better happier more giving people so and um, what about how you actually create your podcast? Like, what what do you use? What sort of programs do you use? What sort of tools? It's actually really simple. Um, with Blog Talk Radio, um, they have. I just have to log on to my computer and access the internet, um, and the studio is right there on their website. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to call. I don't have to have anyone call in. I mean, they have to call in, but they don't have to travel, especially in L.A. There's there's issues with traffic. Horrible uh, so traffic in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I don't know what program Blog Talk Radio uses, but all I do is log in. I have a call-in number and a password. It's kind of like doing a conference call, but mm -hmm. the whole world can listen. Yeah. And do you have so. a specific microphone that you use? No, it's all just whatever my Mac automatically comes with mm -hmm. so your internal <laughs> microphone yes <laughs> that sounds really easy and then um they up they would obviously just do everything for you you wouldn't have to do the uploading or anything would you no it's automatically on their site but i do i'm a little bit behind because i've been so busy with the book but i do put everything on my site as well mm -hmm. um eventually uh, and i've made videos so my youtube channel um also make i make it into a video it's it's just pictures of whoever the guest is intertwined with the 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 interview but um yeah they they make it so easy so anyone who's interested in starting a podcast blog talk radio is a, a great option and they have i mean my show personally i've never had the president of the united states on but even barack obama has been on blog talk radio wow. so that's how much how much of a draw the website has mm -hmm. And then um, when, like you said, you put it on your website, do you just use the embedded code or you actually upload it to your website? Just upload it. There's a way to me, for me to download it onto my computer and then upload it back uh, again on my, my, uh, on my website. And there's a, a link that says radio show that you can go and see every guest that I've had on over the last four years. On your website, cool. And then, um, like, do you get the RSS feed from your shows and submit it to other channels like iTunes or anything, or you just keep it all on Blog Talk Radio? Um, it's all on Blog Talk Radio. There, I think um, I haven't looked into having everything on iTunes, but I know some people have said they've listened to my show through iTunes. So 
I'm assuming Block Talk Radio is taking care of all that as well, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and have you had a favorite person that you've spoken to when you've been Besides interviewed? You? Besides me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer there, Heather. <laughs> Very good answer. Um, gosh, it's, I've had so many incredible guests. I definitely think, like Chris Carr, I joke with her that I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> sharing sharing her story. Um, Rory Freeman's always a great guest. She's very funny mm -hmm. and has good insight. Um, and uh, Robert Sheik has been a great guest, the, the uh, plant-based muscle bodybuilder. <laughs> he's getting more into running now, but I like his story because he uh, he's super funny and energetic, but he went from being this little weakling nerdy guy to like a strong nerdy guy. <laughs> so. I've, I've interviewed Robert too and um, he's, a, he's a great interview subject. Just, yeah, like you said, that energy is just amazing. <laughs> yes. And he's yeah, a he's, good friend too. Yeah, Yeah, he's a sweet, very sweet guy with tons and tons of energy, very funny, but I've never been disappointed with a guest. Um, I have to say I've been, with, been very lucky with that, but I choose everyone myself oh, and reach out to them. Okay. They're either someone that I know personally, like Robert or Rory mm -hmm. or you, um, or I reach out to them and um, make sure that they would be a good, interesting guest. Um, anyway, I did have one person um, who was calling from their cell phone and driving, and it was pretty distracting, but otherwise I've been <laughs> very, very lucky. And how often do you do your podcast? <laughs> Uh, I used to do it weekly, and now I'm doing it monthly just because I'm so busy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it'll probably stay monthly, f at least for now. Um, you know, when the book settle stuff settles down, maybe I'll up that again, but um, yeah, for now it's monthly because that's all, that's all I can physically, physically do. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Okay. Well, yeah, make sure everyone you check that one out on Blog Talk Radio. And um, Heather, what, are, what have you got planned for the rest of the year? Book-related stuff, I guess? Yes, travel for the book. And I'm hoping I will be coming to Australia at some point for the Yay. book. I'm looking into, yeah, looking into doing some workshops there and then including maybe some of the Veg Fest. But that's still still in the works. Um, and, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I have a, a lot to do. I'm, going, I'm probably going to be doing a workshop in Costa Rica Mm -hmm. Um, but still that hasn't been confirmed yet, but I've been talking to the, the owner about, uh, me joining a yoga retreat and doing like an hour, th um, an hour a day for four or five days. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I just all, like I said, the, my publicist has her fingers everywhere and a lot of pots trying to get things together, but I will be on, um, we haven't confirmed a date yet, a show called Better TV. Mm -hmm. um, it's on nationally in the U.S. It's, they, they, uh, they film everything in New York. So mm -hmm. What sort of show that, is that? Um, it's a talk show, but they, they do focus on positive, um, positive messages and inspirational messages. Um, and they have health-related health topics on there, but then they also have sp sports guys that... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even know who these guys who they are, but like football, famous football players and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So. so no soccer players for you then? Uh, I don't think there's any soccer players. I know. No <laughs> soccer players. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Heather, for taking the time out to have a chat with us today. And um, if you'd like to check out Heather's website, livenaturallivewell.com, where you can also get her book and check out Amazon, Barnes & Noble and all those other places for Fix Your Mood with Food. And um, thank you for joining us. And you can see vivalavegan.net for more information and more interviews with inspiring vegans. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, darling. <laughs>